Neil brought that up. That's just, it is, it's so beautiful. But I have two Formula One spoilers that I love. Where's he gone? Hello and welcome to another Collecting Addicts podcast. This is episode 18. I know, I didn't think we'd get this far either, but we're here. Uh, Two of us are in Italy. I think three are in the UK. Now, first subject for this week, because we were a bit negative last week, we talked about things we didn't like. So we're going to be positive. We're going to start with spoilers that we love. Great spoilers. And I don't mean when people give away the plot to a show before it's actually been aired. Chris Cooper, tell me your greatest spoiler. Uh, I saw my greatest spoiler at the Goodwood Revival, no, the members meeting the other week. Uh, it's the spoiler on the back of the 911 Carrera RSR that won the 73 Targa Florio, complete mm. with Mary Stewart collars on the rear spoiler. Yeah, did anyone know that? I didn't know that until this year. That there's funny little extra things on the side. Yeah. Mar- I can see why they're called Mary Stewart collars, it was quite cool. Can it's you explain just- why they're called Mary Stewart collars? Because you can see that they're called that. <laughs> You can see that they're called that. No, no, no. You can see that they're called that. Can you explain why you can well, see I, that? Well, I, I'm assuming it's because it's something to do with royal collars and Mary oh, Stewart I see. and they're all going... those kind of Mary. Oh, I thought my son Mary here and there. Peters. Yeah, I need my son's here in their British royalty history. I thought but you I think... said Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a different. Or collars and cups. That's a different kind of appendage, I think. Yeah, I think uh, so, and I didn't see anything like that on any car. At Goodwood, your grace. Okay. And do you know what? It it, it 2.8 look, RSR. It looks mm. so well balanced as well, doesn't it? Because because you can yeah. argue that is a great spoiler something that's just ostentatious, sticks out like plumage, or is it balanced with the rest of the car? It's balanced. It's balanced. It's balanced. And I, I spoke to our, our mate Karun. Some of us I think most of us know Karun. Uh I was talking to him this morning actually. And uh I said, Did you enjoy it? Because he made a bit of noise, which is great. And uh, he said, yeah, it's just a wonderful thing. There's actually quite a nice article about it on the intercooler as well. Um, so, yeah, 2.8 911 Carrera RSR or three litre, actually, that engine uh, in that car. R6, I think it's known as. So, yeah, just the best spoiler. I was going to say, because obviously I can never just give one answer to these questions. Um, but Cameron forbade me from saying the RS500 Sierra. He said, no, Dad, that's rubbish. The manager will really hate you. So I didn't say that one. <laughs> but it would never really hate you, but, you know. I, I'm not sure if they made one or two of those cars, but the well, I, I, I think there might be there two. And one of them was sat in Paris unused for about 25 years and was uncovered by a guy in, in Monaco. And it was in a trust in, in Paris and it came out. And I, I think they, it was sold for six or seven million euros or something wow. along those lines. I think, I think of the two yeah. they built, I think of the two they built, seven are still for sale. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Anyhow, Mr. C, that was a lovely. That wasn't. That wasn't what I call brevity from you. But I get the suspicion that you've not spoken to many people today because you were very, very talkative then. And I like the fact we give you an outlet to be talkative. Thank you. I, I, I love. I love it too. Good. Uh, now let's let's just get the one with the most unbalanced attitude towards aesthetics out of the way. Now, Ed would love it. Uh, what's your favourite spoiler? Because it's going to probably make most of us vomit. Well, most of you at home, but I have to stay in the office. Everyone's left, so I've, I've poured myself some minuti, but I, I've had it with ice. Manish, shall we? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, I approved that earlier. Don't worry, everybody. I did. We had a little consultation, and given it's been in the sweaty pour, I approved the ice cube. <laughs> in the um, rosé, you approved a minuti uh, rosé no. with ice. Pour moi. Love the it. first one, the first one, I'm not sure is a spoiler, and it's not my choice, but I'm going to say it anyway to debate whether it's a spoiler. But as an M3 CSL lip on a modern M3, uh, a E46 M3 CSL, yeah, that's a is good that call. classed as a spoiler? or is Definitely. That, you know what? I don't agree with you because it's integral to the boot lid. A spoiler is a spoiler. I'm not saying spoiler. it is. I, that's not my choice. I'm just I'm just asking, is that classed as a spoiler? I quite that like is a, it. That is an actual body panel that's had its shape moved. That's not a spoiler. I, that's why I thought you would say okay. that. So that's not my choice. I, Do you know what? I, Clifford, Clifford's so offended he's gone back to his, his, what he calls... <laughs> the Bodleian Library, to get something out of his bookshelf. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, my the choice... collection of a dyslexic in the, in the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, my choice is that of a 993 RS, 
Oh, yes, hell. but and it is the small spoiler, not yes. the yeah, big Yeah, it can't be the big one. That's better looking. Much yeah. beautiful. It yeah. is. Yeah. Look so at, that's my one. I oh, will. Blimey. I think we need Neil Clifford. You need to reply to that very quickly because you were shaking your head. Well, I think we're in danger of being bloody boring and predictable like last week, the two car garage and only choosing spoilers from Porsche. Okay. So I'm, I'm going off piste and I'm going correct. I mean, the, the best spoiler of any car is... I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I would argue that this is integral to the car as opposed to a spoiler. Absolutely agree. But I think it's the best spoiler because it's, it's it probably the best car ever made. That could also be an argument whether it's a 2.7 RS, but it's the last car that Enzo approved. It's the first 200 mile an hour car. If you watch the Chris Harris video in Anglesey of the F40 versus the F50, it's, and that's a hundred years old. Work. Yeah, we'll give you that. As, but it's bloody good work. And I was pleased to see that Chris chose the right car there. It's the F40. And what an amazing spoiler. I mean, you can't be that. No, you can't. You I can't. never thought I'd see you bashing your toy Concorde with a book of an F40. <laughs> uh, but we, we can't disagree. No, uh, Manage, the F40. Manage, talk us through, talk us through uh, spoilers. My my top line is Ferrari F40. I was just nodding like one of those dogs in the back of someone's car when Neil brought that up. That's just it is it's so beautiful. But I have two Formula One spoilers that I love. Oh, where's he gone? I had one of those. Go on. Where's he gone? gone. So I think does anyone remember? It's a little bit hysteric, but. The Ferrari 126C2. It was the one that Paul Gilles Villeneuve yes. was killed in. Yeah. At Las Vegas, they had a very special spoiler. And people said they did this because Enzo Ferrari was kind of protesting. Oh, what a pretty picture that is. So this, is a, this is a Japanese poster that is rarer than an F40 itself. No. Actually, it's so rare oh. that I couldn't even open it because it'd be worth two pence if I open it. Well, so, there were few, so there were fewer than 3,000 of those printed? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Look at have, that. You been have you been got, you've told some stuff in Italy today, Chris, that we're not privy to? <laughs> oh, my God. When we download you about today, the, the world's going to end. Manage, carry on. You were really so, 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 so by our... <laughs> By so Neil the, saying F40 twice. Yeah. No, no, no. So, so the Ferrari 126 E2, the Villeneuve Ferrari, if you just look at the version of this Ferrari that drove in Las Vegas, it had a two metre wide rear wing. And if you looked at it from the top, it was a very thin plane and then a kind of Z shape. It was basically Z shape. It was the most incredible thing you've ever seen. Held literally, it was held up by what seemed like a matchstick. And every time it went around a corner, it just did this. And I don't think it generated any downforce. I think he was just doing it to take the piss out of the British teams. And um, the other very beautiful um, Formula One rear spoiler is the Renault RE20. So I think it was yes. a 1980 Renault. You're quite right. It just the shape. Yeah. Oh, it just it was just just this car. I don't even know how it was held onto the car. It was, was so that the first turbo. You mean the first turbo car? It was a sec second, so 17. Second well, the first turbo car was actually 77, but it was the, the RE1, yeah. So this must yeah, be so, so this is the RE20 from 1980. Jabouy, um, Arnu, and yeah. I think, I don't even, I think, no, Prost wouldn't. He was at McLaren, but he was Jabouy and Arnu, and it was so it, beautiful. It was the car. rear view of it that you could yeah. see. It wasn't just an aerofoil, it, it had shape. Yeah. Exactly. It was, it yeah. was like a but You know what? It had, when you do that, you realize why we liked it. It was, yes. Right, so I, I've gone through the mixer here a bit. Racing cars, uh, some of those chaparral wings, like the 2E, I just thought mm -hmm. they were so outrageous. If a wing's designed to shock, you, when you've literally, someone's decided to put a, a, a door above a car on, a, on some struts, I, I, I admire the chutzpah. Uh, I'm not saying it's beautiful, but I love those as big wings. Um, I think any any big current GT3 racing car wing is just looks fantastic and makes you realise that road cars are a bit underwinged. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a philosophical point. I want you to all disagree with me or, or agree with me. I think a wing is something that should make kids point and stare. It's all about where the kids go. Yeah. Wow, what's that? Mm -hmm. 
And I've got one that you're going to think I'm totally, that just, we think I'm so weird, but there's one that just fascinated me. And it's not a big wing. And Neil's had one. But the wing on the Tamer 832 when I was a kid. Oh, God. The yeah. fact this thing came out of a boot lid just changed yes. my life. Amazing. I just thought it was basically Night Rider for the road. I couldn't believe yeah. it happened. So I'm really sorry. I'm going to say that the wing that affected me most was the Tamer 832 because it, 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 was cool. what it, would do. it made kids go, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's the only thing about that car that ever could, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, the leather interior. If you had, if you had the um, uh, optional potenta frau, whatever it's called, the soft sofa leather, magic. So if you were offered another 832 for sale, what would you say? Well, I, I don't need to offer another one. I'm sure I will buy the one I already had back. Yeah. <laughs> what else I've do you do? I've only owned it once, for fuck's sake. You've got two more, two more turns to go. Right. Yeah. Moving, it's coming moving, back to me by Norfolk. Moving <laughs> swiftly on to this week's two-car garage, which is, without a doubt, the most precise and awkward proposition we've had in our 18 episodes. It was proposed by Mr. Neil Bodleian Library Clifford, <laughs> uh, and it isn't edited with an F40. Here we go. This is, I have to take a deep breath here. You've convinced your new wife, brackets, who is seven months pregnant, that you can finally move from the Chelsea two-bed flat to the countryside for a garden, the free schools, and, of course, a double garage, hopefully in the Ascot area. We've not had a full stop yet, so I'm going to pass out. With the money made on the flat, he's set aside £50,000 for your dream 1970s cars, Dash, not a full stop, just he's giving me a dash. You need a big car for the family, including the two cockapoos plus a sporty cabriolet for the Sunday morning coffee escapes. That's my first full stop there. <laughs> Strictly 1970 to 1979, and he wants to try to avoid Germany build if possible, so not to upset the in laws. A nice bit of xenophobia. Any money left over is yours to buy useful things for your man cave. Hideaway. Right. Well, I just get some oxygen. Can Chris Cooper please answer that? So just to, we had this conversation yesterday and, and I think, Neil, you and I got it. Everyone's got it. Monkey was just a bit slow. So what you're talking about here is a present day scenario. Of course. Yes. Correct. Yes. And off collecting cars sold section. Exactly. I may not have done that bit. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, that um, bit. I think this is brilliant. This one, <laughs> because um, the family car can only be a Rover SD1. 3.5. What, you're um, going to put your dogs in the back of that? Are you some kind of sadist? Cockapoo? It's quite a small dog. Rover SD1 for test, three point. I think if you do a for test, you see, for test is probably 81, 82, but they've been a prototype. So you put the budget in there, Chris. You put the budget in there. It wouldn't be a V8, it wouldn't, it would be a V8 S. It wouldn't be the Vitesse, would it, Neil? You know, that'd be the V8 S. Yeah, it wasn't a V8 it dash a S though. It was a V8 S, no dash. My father had one. I would do the Vitesse though, personally. So would I. It's my you choice. I'm not sure how the cockapoos are going to deal with that cloth. You could not get a Vitesse in '79. You well, you could. It was '81. You, it's a but w. What you could do, what you could do, which is what I've just done. If anyone's still interested, is you'd have it rebuilt, bored out by somebody doing TVR par type stuff. So five litre, just under 400 horsepower, seven and a half thousand revs. Bit of work on the suspension. I reckon all of that you could have done for about 35 grand. Just to stop you there, you know this is our podcast, not an episode of Mr. Ben. You haven't gone through the wardrobe. You know that, don't you? Can anyone hear a noise? <laughs> it's that oh, droning noise. <laughs> oh, it's gone again. And if by magic the shopkeeper appeared. It's gone. <laughs> Who looked a bit like me and a manish, actually. Right, the open on. top car. Triumph TR6. Oh, oh good. Triumph TR6. Uh, 72, 73, probably 73. Yep. Yep. Uh, get rid of the fuel injection, twin Webers. Actually, you can have triple Webers on those cars. Okay. Uh, bit of work, straight pipes, about 200 horsepower. And the noise that God made. In the purple. <laughs> um, probably, I don't like the purple, so probably red or like a royal blue. Mm -hmm. um, with the alloy, they're sort of alloy wheels rather than wire wheels. So a Rover SD135 reworked, a lot more powerful and noisy. TR6 reworked, 50 grand. It's a good one. The other, I'd love, that. I'd love that. 
the other unaccepted upside or unexpected upside from your choices is that 20 years into the future, when Operation U Tree was started, you'd be the second phone call the police would make. So well <laughs> done there, Mr. Cooper. Neil Clifford. Oh, well, I, I devised this, so clearly I've got to come up with the best, <laughs> best solution. You know, the middle class weren't driving Mercedes in the 70s. They were driving Peugeot. Oh. They were fucking driving Peugeot. This is my bloody rethink face. I know where you're going, Clifford. You're going to irritate me here. Yeah? He yeah. said that you would guess this yesterday. Yesterday on the plane, he said, Neil Clifford is going to do dot, dot, yeah. dot. It's, it's Peugeot. And it's 505 estate. Uh, 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 I don't uh, think uh, it could be. 504. You're too, you're too, 504, you yeah. Can't well, be 505. Yeah, 505 was really 80 yep. on, on a W. But um, I like the look of the 505. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Don't argue with you. But... Why is it? You, how you can't you cheat the... your own? <laughs> you can't yeah, you imagine <laughs> cheating. Why don't you say from 1971 to 1980? The poshest people in Portsmouth had Peugeots in the 70s. Naturally, there was even, I think there was a 604 estate, wasn't there? Mm. I think mm. someone did make one. I hope yeah, there was. That would have been really interesting. I'm sure there was a 604. Anyway, I've gone 504 and a half estate in that lovely sort of mid green with the cloth. I think there's yep. a C option. You can chuck the cockapoo bloody yappy things in the back. Um, two kids never break down. These are the things you go to Nairobi and see, and there's never even had an MOT, this thing never breaks down. And then it, going 70s, my first job actually was in the Fiat garage in Portsmouth called Cannons on the youth train. I used to know that. Yeah, where was that? Cannons of Portsmouth. There was one in Fulham, in, in Fair, I'm not Fulham, Christ, never been to Fulham. And it was called Cannons. Actually, it was 83, so I'm jumping back a little bit. The the only car that you can have as a sports car is in the 70s. You had to have flip-up lights. You had no choice because that I is... I know where this is going. 70s. Please don't go there. Fiat X19. Oh, OK. We thought it was TR7. The early car. Actually, can you believe this car came out in 72? Yeah. Fucking 72. UK right-hand drive, I think, was 76. Although there's that, that company that used to convert them. The 1300, the four-speed... Designed by Bertoni, you know, this is the guy that designed the Mura and the Espada. And this is, now you can go and buy one of those for eight grand. So I've actually got 25 grand left for my man cave. Now, what, dare, we ask, dare we ask what you're going to do in your man cave with 25,000 pounds? Okay, I've got, a, I've got a lot going on here. Now, what does the man buy? Are we going straight into man caves? Do you want me to spend the money now or do I do it later? Do it in later. man cave. You better do it later because that okay. does. Okay. We've well, given got, away what our next section is. I've got, Edward, 20, Edward. I've got 25 grand for my man cave, which I will share in the next section. Thank you very much, Neil Clifford. Uh, uh, Edward Lovett, can you please display the same level of discipline that Neil Clifford did there? I'll try, but I wasn't from Portsmouth and uh, I think I was born in Swindon, actually. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's like Portsmouth uh, without but, the seaside. But my alter ego today, he's he's different. See, my mother was from Bordeguera and my uh, father was from Monton. So uh, th they refused we could ever buy a German car. Exactly. And uh, I've decided to go with a Citroen Safari oh, because yeah. I did listen to what I WhatsApp last night and my choices are from the collecting cars sold section. <laughs> And, and from my sporty little two-seater, I've gone from a Fiat 124. Nice. Which I looked into today with a bit, a bit of deeper research, because I know that's... And that put you off. Brown, but it, well, it would have. Actually, I saw some quite nice videos. Very interesting. Um, Aurelio Lampredi, is that correct? Designed that engine, which was the same engine in a, the first yep. winning Ferrari Formula One. Wow. Um, and as you guys are in the heart of uh, the land of Ferrari now, and it was also the same basis of the engine from an O37, a Delta Integrale, What's to this? name a few. It's a great car. That's a provenance. Yeah, it mm. is, Rodney. Um, Did you, and, have you so, paid, have you it, paid the other thing? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, no, I just use ChatGPT or Bard. Um, but the other, t the other thing okay. is, we've sold a few of these cars 
in collecting cars. So <laughs> I can buy both of them either for 14 grand. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to uh, get away without any mechanical bills for that. Or I can get a couple of better versions of them for 36,000. Get the better ones. Yeah, so fine. So that just depends on what's left over for my man cave. I still don't really understand the question we've been asked here, having heard two of the answers, but it's great fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go for Manish Pandey now, please, because I want to know whether you've understood the question better than me. No, I'm, I'm struggling with this question because I want to know why he only wanted two cars from between 1971 and 1979. Because he loves the 70s. Yeah. It's He's just got, the, he just got 70s. Oh, okay, but why is he... Argue argue against. Against. He I also liked 1980, according to Neil, but that's... <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I thought I'd get away with the 505. It was no, but why does he like cockapoos? I mean, I was just sitting there trying to imagine this. Because this every bloke in Fulham has got a bloody cockapoo. Yeah, That's a good Ask point. Ed love it. <laughs> Manish, <laughs> they're poodles. Okay, sorry. Answer the question. Okay, so I really wanted to go German so badly, and you did right. The exact words you were, I think you wrote something like try to avoid. You didn't say you absolutely cannot have, so you weren't categorical in German. So, ah. So you're choosing to have an argument with the in-laws and have a German car. Yeah. My mother-in-law is German, okay? So since we're injecting some reality into this, I don't think she'd mind. Um, so this is what I've gone for. I have gone for a 1979 W123 300 turbo diesel estate in Caledonian green. I just think they're the most beautiful cars and the, the roof racks are so lovely and they have cloth seats. And actually... Um, there is a famous actor who lives nearby who has one in Burgundy and has Ooh. two dogs. So what he has in the back is just a massive, great dog bed. And it's just there all the time. So the two cockapoos, no problem at all in a massive, great dog bed. Get four adults into that. And my, and my, and by the way, there was one. It only had 406,000 kilometers on the clock. You could get it for 9,000 quid. I'm not sure Brilliant. how far it would get me. But um, so that that was great. And then I found an Alpha Spider from mm. 1976. It was just beautiful. So is that White, Camtail or? Camtail. Camtail. Yeah. Camtail, absolutely. White, Camtail, black. Some bits of it looked like they were leather. Some bits of it looked like they were cloth. <laughs> it was just, I've got, I mean, they did have a little photo of the engine. I chose not to look. And it was something like 14,000 quid. And it also had 2 trillion miles on the clock. But it just looked great. Lovely. And that saved me. I think I've got about, I think I've got about 34,000 pounds for my man cave. So, uh, frugal. 24,000 pounds, sorry, for my man cave. So um solid answers there i also is anyone my manager's popping my speakers a bit i don't know whether we should whether he should take oh, the chance yeah. to just to either sit back a bit or take the levels down i don't don't want to destroy uh your contribution uh, now, ears, you, you've basically chosen everything i want so i've got a few options I, I thought this might happen um so i'm gonna have to go Peugeot because i'm not a natural rule breaker like the man that set this task i'm gonna go 504 but i want I want something special. So I'm going to go for the Dangel 4x4 that was made oh, by the Dangel Super Company Man. for North African French colonies. Just Google it, 504 Dangle. Magic. Greatest car ever. They ain't cheap now. So I'm probably I'm probably 25 grand in there. Um, and I think, and this thing does exist somewhere. I, I, they made it somewhere, Skunk Works. But it was Bertoni that spotted the genius of this vehicle himself, actually, at the Geneva Motor Show when it was launched. It's called the Triumph TR7. Um, and I just think, I love the fact that every time someone asks me, why did you buy that? I could tell the story of Batoni walking down the side of a TR7 and saying nothing to the journalist that was, that was interviewing him. He said nothing. Then he walked down the other side and he said, my God, they've done it to this side too. Yeah, I read that. Um, <laughs> it's I, on this side as well. I think, I think for the money, I could get myself a TR8. Oh, yeah. So I don't think up. that was in in period. I don't think that was in our. I think I think you get them on a V plate, which is seventy. Yeah, yeah that's seventy nine. Yeah, mm. uh, and uh, and if, if I'm going to be judged by this kangaroo court, the man with the hat on is not going to be judging me on this. Particular. Yeah, no, I think a um, TR eight or TR seven so, V eight on a V. 
Okay, I'll take a, mini I'll take light a four, wheels. I'll take a four cylinder TR7 convertible oh. uh, because I think, I just think sometimes you have to be ironic. And I'll probably still be quicker around a track than Edward in that. So I think I'm going to make with four TR7s. So that probably leave me, I reckon, with 25 in for the dangle, tenner for that, 35. I've only got 15 left for my man cave, which leads us beautifully in to our next quandary, which is you've got the money left over to spend on stuff for your man cave. I'm going first with Neil Clifford because he seems to be sitting in a man emporium. <laughs> now, what does the man of the 20th century buy? who loves to play golf because golf is obviously dead now everyone now buys a racing bike if you move to the countryside and you're not a man of the 80s and 90s where you'd have gone out and bought a lovely set of ping clubs you don't get fit doing that now and everyone's got their bloody apple watches on and everyone wants to can sort of be super healthy so they go out and buy a racing bike so you'd go out and buy a lovely uh, what would I buy? A full Enigma titanium, which the frame is about 12 grand. And then I'd go to the shop and I'd buy all the best Campagnolia bits. So I'd be in for about 18 grand and I'd do two grand's worth of Lycra gear from Rafa or whatever. <laughs> but I could then hang out with all my mates with their shitty Lycra on every weekend and drink espressos and yeah, you could, go to, you could go drink espresso with Marino and post pictures of it on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. And you can, you know, oh, I, I, did, I did 120 kilometres today. Um, so you definitely, you definitely get your racing bike and your Lycra. But I've still got about 12 grand left. So to be more sensible, as opposed to the sort of bloody racing bike, you'd buy the fridge for the wine and the beer. You'd buy a lovely, cute, the longy coffee machine you'd buy an old vintage leather sofa off of ebay and then you'd have about four grand left and what's the other thing you want you want a trials bike and you are you going to go montessa or are you going to go Boltaco? it's basically blue or red city or united i would go montessa yep go montessa a lovely little Cota 350 you could never get the bloody thing started there'd be fucking oil everywhere if you did start it, you'd then burn your leg and you'd be in A&E getting your leg repaired. But still, the dream of the countryside with the racing bike and the leather sofa and the Montessa trials bike, you'd have ticked every box. <laughs> that is the most comprehensive answer we've ever had on this show. A little round of applause there. <laughs> the level of thought that's gone into that means you've done no work for days. This is the sort of <laughs> shit I think about all the time. Um, they would love it. Match that. Well, it's funny. We all saved an awful lot of money, haven't we, to spend here? And I've just jotted a few things down. I've completely blown the budget. So I now need about 500 grand's worth of profit in that flat from Chelsea left over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a, a, a motorbike in the man cave has got to be essential. And I think a Ducati 916 Senna. Um, oh, wow. is, Very is, good. is probably got to be the one there. So obviously I've bought the shitty Safari and the shitty Fiat 124, which probably don't work, but I'll, I'll, I'll just get the train to the, uh, sorry, a taxi to the station. Um, but also that I, I pool tables, I'm thinking, I, you know, do I need pool? Do I need foosball? Do I need table tennis? And I'd, I'd suggest go and look at these when you've got a huge amount of money burning a hole in your pocket, which I don't. But there's a company called Eleven Ravens from L.A. And they make the most incredible um, man cave things like uh, foosball, table tennis. They're, they're just beautiful. So, yeah, a Ducati Senna and probably a pool table. What colour? What colour Ducati Senna? Well, the, I think I, the, the first iteration, iteration, yeah, was, was, was grey, and then they, they did a black version. My yeah. father had one. He rode home in it once and realised he wasn't a man for a sports bike. Realised like he didn't ride motorbikes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris Cooper. So I think the first thing you've got to have in a man cave is a flat roof on it, because you're going to hang on it upside down a Porsche 962. <laughs> oh. Got to, haven't you? 
got to have a flat roof to hang a racing car upside down on it. <laughs> yeah. Three million pounds. It's, there. Not Chelsea, a man not cave. <laughs> it's not a man cave if it's not a 962 hanging upside down it. Or, no, or similar. Where'd you, where'd you get the money from? Um, it's fine for us, mate. Moving on. <laughs> um, I also had a 916 tenor, actually. I had a 916 tenor. I was tossing up between a 916 Senna and a 748 in that yellow. Now, Chris, you know this, and I'm, the rest of you can probably guess it. Um, me and motorbikes do not go together. I have <laughs> fallen off paddock scooters. In fact, when we were at the ring a few years ago, yes. Marino had to show me how to start the scooter I was sitting on. I was trying to make out I was just resting. <laughs> I wasn't actually trying to go anywhere. And he said, he came up to me and he just, he just looked at me. I, I was like making cool out. I was just sitting there, you know, because it's very busy. I don't want to go anywhere. And he pulled the choke out and he said, that's how it starts. I thought I'd been sussed. I don't think I've been on the motorbikes in turn, but I love the idea of them. About 30 years ago, in fact, when the 748 and 916 first came out, there was a bike magazine called Fast Bikes and I had a year of just buying these things. I was thinking, I'm going to buy. And just as soon as it came, it went again. But I'd still love to have one in the man cave. Mm. So it'd have a 962 on the flat roof or something similar, uh, 916 Senna. I think you'd have to have a car lift. Like, you know, those little four post lifts. Hmm. I don't, I'd probably trap my fingers and everything and end up, you know, quadruple amputee. But I think having a car lift that you could just lift something up and you could look at it. Um, I think you'd also have to have a kettle, <laughs> a kettle. Not one of those cuckoo taps, because kettles take a while to boil, and you can talk to people. You've done. Um, Cliff is done. He's run. He's got. He's got to get his Porsche design kettle. Uh, yeah, that's it. it You've got to have a kettle. You've got, You've to, got to have, have a kettle. kettle. Yeah, yeah. You, have a kettle. you need a Porsche last, design one, Neil. And the last, uh, I've got two more things. Sorry, I've got two more things. You need a dyno. You need a dyno. Yeah, so that's a dyno in a man cave. But the last thing you need is the most important thing in a man cave. And that's friends. Oh, oh. You can't have a man cave without friends. I've got a violin here somewhere. I'm sure when I said this yesterday, we obviously we bought a little house out in Surrey with the whilst after we've sold in Chelsea. And I suggested one of those little wooden pods that go at the end of the garden. You've now got a yeah. lift, a 962 on the roof, a yeah, motorbike. But- and about 10 million quid by the sounds of it to spend on all this stuff. You like my ideas though, don't you? Oh, very That's the most important thing you have in a man cave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, those are bloody brilliant. Those things. For the are, two cars brilliant. that you bought that never fucking start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I've got two by of those. Way, I need those. Yeah. Edward, <laughs> that, that company there, phone them. They're going to pay us for that bit of exposure there. Yeah, they are. What I can say, Chris Cooper, is the last thing you've got is you've got friends now. You've got. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm complete. Okay. You um, make me complete. Manish Pandy, we're going on an emotional journey here. What's in your shed? Um, the thing that I would most like in my man cave is a proper <laughs> pro sim Formula One game yeah. thing. Oh. You've got to have one of those with a proper steering wheel and proper pedals and the three screens, one in front of you, one to the left, one to the right, and you know, the force feedback. And I have to have one. I think they're about thirty thousand pounds, though, so they are pretty expensive. Yeah. How much is yours, Edward? What's this? Hang on, hang on, hang on, on Car- carry on, Manish. Yeah, so I'd, I'd really like one of those, and then I really want a brilliant hi-fi, a record-based, a vinyl. That's a good one. Yeah, I miss hi-fi that. Hi-fi mine. So I want yeah. a Riga Planer Ten. Yeah. With an Aphelion cartridge, oh. nicer than my RP6. I want Proac response speakers. Yeah. And I want a Supernate 3 amp. Oh, nice. Um, and then there's one last thing to make my man cave completely complete, which is I've forgotten the name. It's this amazing Norwegian projector. And it is sort of like an 8K projector. So I can sort of just watch. That's really cool. I, I just thought you watch. only had 12 grand left over. No, I know, but I mean, look, I mean, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still three million nine hundred and eighty-four thousand pounds cheap. <laughs> he's also he's worked really hard today, so let him have nice things. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I not in the man cave, but we we got the we got the sim in the <gasps> office. We got the sim in the office. Love it. Yeah, yeah. love we've it, love it. We've got um, 
We've got a rocket in the office. <laughs> yeah. I bought that from Bonhams because I was intrigued why an auction company can get away with charging 27.5% buyer's premium. Um, and we've also got a motorbike in the office. Oh. And a pub next door. <laughs> yeah. we must do this, this is not often. my man cave. This is my office. We must, we must do this more often when Edward's been on the Lady Petrol. And, and, <laughs> and Cliff was just waving his model Concorde. Yeah, I missed out the toy. I missed out the model oh, Concorde. Come on. Right, so I've got, uh, I've got some... Um, have we, Neil, have we done yours? Yes. Right, sorry. Because I've, I've had a glass of wine too, you might be able to tell. So man cave, I, I've had various man caves, and I agree with so many of the things you've suggested. But all too often, once I've gone through this process, I've obviously thought about this like you guys endlessly, I end up not using the stuff in there. So Manish, yes, you can have the hi-fi, but I had a nice hi-fi in my man cave and I never turned it on. Um, I've had all sorts of other things. I've had a projector, but I always used to go and watch telly in the house because it was warm. I didn't want to warm the man cave up. I couldn't want to wait for it to get warm. I couldn't afford to heat it. The one that really resonates is Chris Cooper's, is the lift. So I have got a cave at the moment. I had a lift fitted at Christmas by Lift Giant. There you go. Uh, I paid full retail price for it. Uh, it wasn't that much money, but I love having a lift. It gives me an extra parking space. And you're right, yeah. having a poke around underneath it's brilliant. is quite joyous. Uh, I totally agree with several of you that a motorcycle is the best thing for a man cave because it doesn't take up much space. And most man caves aren't very big. So it doesn't seem like you've taken up too much space that you're not going to use. And I'd have an Aprilia Tuono like in a flash because it is the best bike I've ever owned. And I adore those things. Other than that, I'd have a fridge, absolutely fridged, stock full of beer. I wouldn't have a fancy sofa. I'd have a comfy chair. Because when you're knackered and you've been riding and you've got to take your leathers off and you're a bit fat, you just want an old comfy chair that yeah. you can take your leathers off. Just Otherwise, you're sweating. Other than that, I wouldn't care too much. I certainly wouldn't want any friends. Well, that's why <laughs> you don't listen to your hi-fi or watch your telly. I know. I just, I, I, I'm trying to hi-fi. Friends. Friends. Those were fantastic. And as would, for you, the, would, you, would you have a footstool, Chris? Would you have a footstool? Soft sofa, I get that. No, no, I just want I want a chair to take my leathers off. I always find myself sitting on the bonnet of a car and denting it or getting frustrated and sweating and almost crying. Why you do you need, need a, climb you need a dog off? bed as well? You do need yeah, actually, you know what? But the dog just goes on the back seat in one of the cars. Those are great suggestions. And Neil's quite right. The uh those uh lithium jump starters are they're life changing, yeah. aren't they? That company, whatever they're called, they are brilliant. No co. The little yeah. one is really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Now, this is this is one of those subjects that I thought we shouldn't approach until we were about to do our final episode. A bit like, this is our James Corden with Adele in the car doing the carpool karaoke. But this is not, don't worry, this doesn't signal the end of our podcast. But what would you do with your last gallon of petrol? It's not a litre, it's a gallon. What would you do with your last gallon of petrol? Manage Pandy. Well, first of all, I copied out last tank of petrol. No, exactly. He said it was tank, and now it's gone okay. to gallon. There you go, tank of petrol. No, tank. tank. You, because because you're you're going to see the last gallon of petrol would have got me about a fifth of the way to my orgasm here. It, <laughs> um, <laughs> this wasn't very good. So I, uh, I, I would like a McLaren MP44, and I would like to do a lap. Or as many laps as I can on my tank of petrol of Ooh. Suzuka, the Ooh, Formula okay. One circuit. That okay. is what I'd do. If I had a gallon of petrol, I'd make it to the first curve, and then the car would basically stop. You might do so half a lap. Tank. You might do half a lap with a gallon. Oh, I, I tell you, I I would just if I, if I could drive something somewhere. Just once, and it's the last time I was ever going to drive. You'd have to do that. That's where Senna becomes world champion. It is way the best circuit, in my opinion, on any kind of simulator. I think it's the most exciting circuit. The combination of corners, and we were talking about it. I don't think it's very, very nicely named. Chris does, but 130R is about as exciting and sort of butt clenching a corner as I've ever, ever done on any kind of sin. I mean, to get that right is just, it's yeah. its the, the most glorious feeling. So that's what I would do. Uh, I don't want to follow that. I don't want to follow that. Neil Clifford, no. I'm now doing what they call a hospital pass to you. Well, I, I'm not sure you can follow that. But I've said it before, so I have to stick with my, uh, my opinion of last time. Porsche 964 RS, on my own, obviously. 
um, breakfast in Villa Deste on Lake Como, and then driving along the lakes all the way up to the Benina Pass. I'm on my way to Samaritz, and driving along those lakes is beautiful. You've got the roar of the engine. You've got the whole lightness thing going on. You can think about all the weirdness of that car. The noise is fantastic. And then you head up into the mountains. You see those first glimpses of the snow. You're banging your way up the Benina Pass, both up and down. It's beautiful. If anyone hasn't been to the Benina event in September, well worth it. Just sat on the side of a mountain all day, seeing the most fabulous cars do that um, road race. And then I'd end up in San Moritz at dusk. The sun's coming down over the lake. I know it's the end of my journey in the automotive world. I park up in Savetta House, beautiful hotel in San Moritz. Um, get myself a big bloody bottle of wine and a, I don't know what you have, maybe the veal milanese with a rocket salad. And you'd be super happy if death was that night, be fine. That's what I would do. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> We're there. Jesus Christ, don't envy you, Chris Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking about this, um, as usual, with my boys. And we kind of we kind of agreed we wanted to do something together, the three of us. And we came up actually quite similar with you, Manish. Um, because there are some journeys you could do that actually you could still do an electric car. Um, there are some things you can't do unless you've got gasoline. And it's got to be a 2004 era V10 F1 car, which everybody says was just the high point of the dynamics, the, the lack of weight, that unbelievably screaming V10 engine, whether it's a Honda or a Ferrari or a BMW or whatever it was. Um, if we were restricted to the UK because petrol's got a bit scarce, then it's Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit because it's so old school. I was there yesterday uh, and over the weekend. And um, you go out to the countryside and you forget how narrow and fast and just, it's even Druids is quite fast because it's got a bit of a flow to it. It's a tiny bit of camber just sort of on the way in, in a bit. But out in the countryside, it's just massively fast and it flows and you can just start to feel the car balancing. I was watching Cameron was there racing in the 420R Caterings yesterday. And he had one, it's quite busy as races, one lap in the middle where he had a bit of a clear, clear track and it just smoothed out and you just feel the car dancing. What would that be like for your last tank of petrol? So I'd share that with the boys. Right. If we had an electric vehicle to converse to the continent, then you'd say Spa, probably not Nürburgring because those cars just wouldn't work on Nürburgring, but Spa. So if we could convey ourselves to Europe, you'd do it Spa. Uh, and you, if it was the UK, Brands GP, and two fingers to Jonathan for his noise limit. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, Edward, love it. Well, as you all spent about 750 grand on your fucking man caves, um, <laughs> I've, uh, I, I got a truck with three cars in them. So they, all three uh, cars have got the, uh, their tanks oh, for fuel. And I've met Neil in San Moritz. Um, he didn't, of, the, but he didn't answer the phone calls. What are you doing now? No, I've, I've, I've had some veal melanese with him. Right. Had my uh, triple espresso. And then I think to start with, I get in the Cobra. And I start my way over some of the Swiss passes, mm. heading towards Stad. And then I'll swap over into a 991 Speedster. Mm. And then I'll make my way down the mountains down into the Aorsta Valley, and I'll start making my way towards Ospedaletti, which is just on the French-Italian border before Monaco. And then I'm going to swap over into my F50 with the roof off for the last bit of fuel. And I'm going to stop off at a restaurant called Biblos, where the Vermentino is 11 euros, the sea bass is fresh, and the calamari Jesus Christ. You, Lovely. You lot, are, you lot are painting pictures tonight. I, I'm quite okay, tempted I'm going to, with to go 
I'm going to go to Aztec West and go around a roundabout till I fuck the tires up. <laughs> um, but, but that, that, that isn't poetic enough. So, so actually, I'm going to do what Chris Co Cooper decided not to do because I've decided to, I've relocated to the southeast. I'm going to get in my little yellow 911 that's been my favourite car that I've ever owned and it's part of my body now. And I'm going to drive it quite sedately to the Nürburgring and I'll still have enough fuel in there to do two or three laps when I get there because it's, it is without a doubt the place I've had the most fun driving and it's it's uh, been the most eye-opening, awesome experience of my driving life. Shared it a lot with Chris and I'll be sad that he's not in the car with me, but he's fucked off to Brands Hatch to drive a V10 F1. Sorry, I had a better offer. So he didn't have a better offer. And when I've done my three laps, the thing will splutter to a halt. And then, this is the good bit, Miller Kunis will arrive. <laughs> Just finishing the third tank of petrol. She will then drive me to the Hotel Antirbgarten, where we'll have a nice dinner and we'll retire to bed and we'll do Wordle together and then wake <laughs> up the next morning and go back to the UK. I love that. Yeah. I, I, funnily enough, I've changed my mind. I might be there with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Um, so I think now that does conclude um, that side of the podcast. But our music choice... Sorry. No, it, 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 it does. Can you go for the music uh, choice? Sorry. <laughs> yes. So we're going to do the music choice now. Manage might want to move in a minute. Um, so uh, do, you want to do, do you want to move or do you want to do the music choice first? Can I, can I quickly do the music choice? But you have to say what the music choice is. Okay. okay. So, so, so I've, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm writing a book at the moment, which is a bit odd. And I had to wrestle with some of my childhood TV shows. And it made me think that sometimes I love listening to the, the great TV theme tunes of our youth and of the current day uh, in the car because they are fantastic bits of music. So music today is favourite TV theme or one that you want to share with uh, our very small crowd. Uh, so why doesn't Chris Cooper go first? Well, uh, we all know who's going to win this, Neil, in a minute. So we'll just build to the crescendo. Oh, um, okay. But I really like uh, the theme from The Protectors, Robert Vaughan, Nairi Dawn Porter, and Tony Anholt. And there were a few cool, cool cars in there, but the theme music was by Tony Christie uh, in the avenues and alleyways. It's a bit of, there's a bit of, is this the way to Amarillo? But it's just so much better and bombastic yes. and anthemic yes. than that. Yes. So uh, it's that sort of 70s, unbelievable. It's quite cosmopolitan. And there's a sort of, there's this soaring, sound and sort of theme of hope and and victory and success and see you next week so the protectors tony christie in the avenues and alleyways neil clifford right it's only one he's done the prep no i haven't i'm just going to do this now are you going to play the music i tried to do that it didn't work for me yeah <laughs> Go. It's the winner. It's the winner. <laughs> We're going to have to play it. I didn't get a, a beat of it, but it is. It's. I mean, this was the most American thing. Oh shit! It's playing again. Um, <laughs> this was the most American thing in my life in the mid in the early seventies. Let's say I was born in sixty seven, so I was probably seven or eight years old. Um, seventy three, seventy four. I know I don't look that old, but um, I am that bloody old. And I couldn't think of anything more American. Yeah. And this thing was made in fucking Slough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the most amazing thing. It was made in Slough by a British genius. We all know Jerry Anderson and actually ended up with 100 members of staff building this thing. It was the most incredible TV series. And that beginning, I still play it probably every every month or two just thinking it's just the most amazing thing the countdown i was in love and still in love with thunderbird 2 and i was reading up about it and it was supersonic was that oh, your like thunderbird 2 that thunderbird 2 was supersonic yeah. thunderbird 1 was actually hypersonic I, it was hypersonic yeah it was a hypersonic it can you brilliant. believe it but He's thunderbird done. 2 with the parting of those palm trees and this, and you know. Which pod will it pick up? Which pod four. will stop? Four. You dreamt for four. You oh. dreamt about four. You pick you up four. You dreamt about four. That Tracy, that Tracy Island. 
I mean, we all wanted to live on Tracy Island. We did. Did, did, did you remember Brains? Do Dot Tracy. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't part of the family, was he, Brains? No, but, but he had the best point. Uh, Mr. Tracy, I think I've come up with a g- genius solution to the pr- 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 problem. I love Brains, it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the best TV series ever made. It was. Yes, by miles. Uh, what are the brothers. Okay. I need to go. I tr- need to go. Sorry. Okay, okay. He's you. You go and then come back. All right. We'll carry on with your absence. No, no. Can I? Can Can I give you my music choice and go? Yeah, and please, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just really quickly. So I was going to go for the. I was going to go for the protectors. I knew somebody would go for it, so I was then then going to go for the persuaders, which yeah. was John Barry, which is yeah. just yeah. dun 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 dun. But actually, I feel I found the best one of the lot. Could be up there with Thunderbirds. The TV theme tune to The Flashing Blade. You've Ooh. got to fight for what you want, for all that you oh, believe. It's I've right to fight for what you want. That's so super neat. It's just like Zorro. Oh, it was so good. Da, 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 da. It was so exciting. So that was mine. Very, oh. very good. Uh, I've, got, I've just got to go and get something. I've got to go and get something. Yeah, go you get... go away. Uh, Edward, love it. I'm not sure if this sound's going to work. I'm going to try it. No. <laughs> no. All the only sound I can hear is a bald head. Fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, Night Rider. Oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah. That's a good yeah. thing. It's sensational. It's absolutely sensational. I'm going to talk for a bit because Manish is going to reappear in a minute. Now, look, I've gone through these agonisingly because a Night Rider that left me. I'm a child of it's mid '80s for me. This really, I'm a bit, old, a bit younger. Um, and I'm going to paint a picture for you, right? So it's 1983. Your mum's got your tea for you, or dinner, whatever you call it in your household. Uh, and beans on toast are there. And you switch on the telly, and they announce the next program coming on. And you just see a guitar and a hand, and it just starts to pluck at the guitar. And they start singing, just the good old boys. And you think, oh, oh my God, it's the Dukes of Hazard for me. Oh, yeah. the, the Dukes of Hazard theme tune is so utterly joyous. Uh, and then, it, and then you just see the jump in General Lee, and you're just oh, I, I've, I've been just. She been was lovely. It was all about the girl, really, wasn't it? Daisy, she was just. Oh, yeah, well. Now I think managed got a bit of a surprise for us in a minute, so he might appear with someone. So I was gonna... surprised. I was surprised because I thought you were going to use Dallas, Chris, as you seem to I share do. that I randomly always, on Saturday there are morning. Others, there are so many others. A Dallas Street Hawk. Street Hawk introduces the concept of a 300 mile an hour off road motorcycle. What's not to like about that? Yeah. So um, the A-Team was fantastic as well. Yeah. All those 80s ones were written by geniuses. Howard's um, Way. Howard's Way. Was, Howard's I mean, Way. It was just such the peak of Thatcher's Britain. Yeah. And yeah, everyone's an entrepreneur. Everyone's starting a business. Everyone's a billionaire. Everyone's driving a white Testarossa. And that beautiful sort of the opening sequence was quite gentle. And as I said yesterday on the text, the bit at the beginning, there's a boat being sailed, and I was sort of, I was because I was big in that scene and sailing in the 80s. Uh, I was sitting in the cockpit, one of them trying to help one of them sail that boat, luckily out of shot. And at the end of it, there's like the bombastic one with the big boat on it that I vomited on once after a race to San Marlo. When they see you. Uh, that was filmed so, in Southampton, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was on the handle. Ah, now uh, oh, I think we have some royalty in the house. Uh, Mr. Montezemolo, what is yes. your two car garage? <laughs> <laughs> it depends uh, how much money can I spend? You as can much spend, as you want. You can spend 50,000 pounds and you have to buy two cars. 55 all? Yes. I can buy one car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maximum one, maybe half. What can I do? <laughs> Give him half a million quid. Yeah, you can have whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited budget. What do you Unlimited have? budget. No. Yeah, one, one, one car for the family and one car for yourself. Well, I have to tell you that I don't, I, I have a good car uh, that uh, it costs less than 50. That is a Renault uh, Megane electric. Good for the, for the town. I got it in row. It's a good car because it's uh, big enough, uh, but not so big. <laughs> but again, with fifty thousand, I'm not allowed to buy any car. My, my <laughs> <laughs> can, can we? Any least... budget, Luca? You can have as much money as you want for your special car. 
Ah, this is a good question. <laughs> of course, of course, a old Ferrari. Hmm. Which one? Which one? <laughs> Four, five, six. Oh. 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 Yeah, we like that. We like that. Could be the it's right. Schematic or manual? This is also good. Four, five, six, maybe manual. Yes. Oh. <laughs> right Does it need to be an M or not? Does it need to be a modificato? What do you mean? Uh, um, because they changed it, you know. The ah, changes. yes. No, I like the original one. You like the original one? Ah, ah, man, oh, 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 oh. You, just, you, just, you just made my life. Yes, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do okay. it tomorrow. Mr. So, uh, Montezab <laughs> Mr. Montezemolo, thank you so much for making a cameo on our yes. podcast. At the exactly. end of the day, I have, I, have, I, have, I have not bought any car, so... <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. Good <laughs> uh, Anyhow, that might give you some clues to what myself and Manish have been doing in Italy. It's been a quite a memorable day. Uh, thank you very much for that. So Manish's plan to buy an automatic 456 Modificato has gone right out the window, <laughs> which pleases Neil <laughs> greatly because he's been lobbying against that for ages. I Edward... like the original one. <laughs> yeah, we're saved. We're saved. Um, everyone's going to go and watch an episode of Thunderbirds. Uh, and uh, Edward's going to try and work out why his computer won't let him play music. Uh, <laughs> we will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.